Oh, there we are. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I guess I had to wait for the magic hour. Hello, my Renaissance grandma listening while cooking. I don't know if you can hear, but what are you cooking today? Hi, Cheryl Faulkner, Triple Threat Firearms and Defense. I want to see what Grand Renaissance Grandma's cooking. I'm actually hungry. Where is where is everybody tuning in from? I think I don't know where Renaissance Grandma is. Hello, G Mama. I know you're up in Ohio, I think. Can everybody type in the chat where you're tuning in from? It's raining cats and dogs here in Connecticut, 6B. 6B. Look at the lighting today, everybody. I finally figured that part out. I still seem really close, but that's because I can see myself now. Cheryl Faulkner's in Georgia. Triple Threat is in Georgia. It was raining there an hour ago, Triple Threat. Uh, you sent it here. It's going to be raining for the next, next couple of days over here. But the good news is that as cold as it usually is in Connecticut, we haven't had any of that SNOW stuff. Oh, 6B Missouri. Wow. I didn't realize that Missouri had a 6B. You're the same as me. Except I'm near, I'm near Long Island Sound. And it's a funny thing. I hear you, my Renaissance grandma, that it's been raining for two days. I live in Connecticut and there's a channel called The Chicken He's up in Litchfield County. He's gotten snow and crazy weather. Um, Yankee Sister Homestead lives less than 15 miles from me. She's in 6A. Micro Farmer is in Connecticut, about 13 miles the other way. And he's in 7B. I guess because he's off of Long Island Sound and they get that protection, I guess, or the sea breeze or something. That's okay, Renaissance Grandma. 6, 6A, 6B. It's all the same. You're making pot stickers to go with your salad. I'm having my annual physical exam in, in um, two weeks, so I'm being really good. This meatless Monday. Today, what did I have? Oh, I had a lamb burger and a salad, but I'm being really good. Hello, Yankee sister, Homestead. I was just talking about you and how we live so close to each other and our weather is totally different. Totally, totally different. And we're in different grow zones. But you're up in the hills. Everyone speaking to each other. Hi, Sissy Joanne Stevens, number one, loud and clear. Oh, you guys, it's so funny. I sent my mother after the broadcast, because I was talking about her behind her back. After the broadcast, I sent it to her on her cell phone. Oh, she was just tickled pink. She was just tickled pink. So I think that I've gotten some of the kinks, the kinks taken out. I'll get the family to put it on so she can see me live. <laughs> not embarrassing her, not embarrassing her. So who, who in the chat is doing the winter grow off? Can you put your hands, one hand up if you're doing the winter grow off? Oh yes, everybody. Thank you for clicking the light buck light button. And if you like our content, and everybody here so far has been back, I hope you're all subscribers. Guess what? I have, I have only about 250 hours until I get, um, or I have the potential to be monetized. 
And speaking of that, I didn't go on YouTube to be monetized. I wanted to preserve what the family was doing, all the things I've learned over the years. But then sometimes, sometimes uh, at some point, people started listening and coming in and it just made me feel good. And I said, well, you know what? Maybe I can share some of the th things that, that I have known. For one thing, most of you know who have been coming around, GQUAT stands for Garden, Quilt, and Art Traditions. In 74 years, I have owned, I have personally owned homes. I've ha had um, at least one home in Connecticut. I've owned property in Washington, D.C., well, outside of Washington, D.C., a place called Capitol Heights, Maryland now. I've owned, I, the family owned a homestead in North Carolina for 40 years. I own property in California in the city. I've, I've staycationed in Arizona with my sister and her husband. They've been married 47 years. So I feel like he's, he's my brother, like my real brother. Hello, Charlotte Urban Gardner and welcome him. Barb Brownlee, you're in 5B6A, severe thunderstorms and 44. You guys, guess what? I didn't get my garlic in the ground. And that seed garlic is so expensive. I finally put it in the freezer to try to give it a break. And I'll figure out if I'm going to wait until spring and plant it or wait till a warm day in Connecticut. I know you can't kill it. Or if I do, at least I get to kill it, not the groundhogs or the squirrels or the neighbors. So we're doing the Gquat, the Gquat meaning. The Q is for quilting. I'm actually a mixed media, mixed media artist. All of these, this art stuff came up after I retired or when I was consulting. I used to travel a lot and spend so much time in hotel suites, you know, hotel suites with jacuzzis, everything. And it's like, what do you do when you're not working 12 hour days and the people that you care about and love are in their working ages and they don't need anything so that, that money can buy because they work and they can buy them themselves. So I started making things specifically a quilt for my mom and dad. They have a king size bed that was up on four posters, huge bed. I couldn't find anybody to make a quilt. So I bought the stuff and started working on it myself. Grandmama Gross says she can't tell, tell if her garlic is still alive. The leaves turn brown when it snowed. That's unusual. If they're outside, you, you might want to mulch them, mulch them heavily. But I, I know that it's still alive because I've had garlic and onions in the refrigerator and freezer that I forgot about. And when I put them outside, they came up anyway. Barb Brownlee, you with your, your five machines, when I figure out how to, how to put a link up, maybe triple threat or somebody that understands how to do this can help me with that. I need to, to, I need some mod more moderators. I got some moderators on. Hello, Nikki, the everyday life of an OCD is chick. Nikki's a moderator. I was just clicking stuff one day and I got a couple of moderators, but I've been pulling my, my, my hair out trying to figure out what I did and I can't seem to do it again. G Mama Gross says, hopefully they'll show up once it warms up. It probably will. It probably will, even if it just wants to go to seed. So we're talking about the meaning of G Quad. So we got to the queue, but I have been doing arts and crafts all of my life. We didn't have a lot of toys growing up. I'm about to do a challenge for another channel, uh, New Beginnings in Cyprus. And one of the things she talked about was showing your toys that you had when you were little. 
we didn't have toys. Last night on the wind down, they were talking about books. Books were our toys. There were six of us kids and my parents were young when they got married. They were 17 and mommy was 17 and daddy was 21. By the time they were, mommy was 27, she had six kids. Daddy always said they were his wife's kids. Uh, at the house was mommy's house too, but all the inside stuff was mommy's. But I remember when we got the World Book Encyclopedias, they would get like one chapter every month. Like we get the A's, then we get the B's. Then we had the um, Unabridged Dictionary. They bought that the same way for us kids. And it was on a big stand. I don't know, it might've come from an old church. You know, the, um, the podiums that you stand at, this book was so heavy, you couldn't lift it up. You turned it over. Yankee Sister was probably in the same camp as us. Uh, say, what toys? I used to see people with Barbie dolls. I'm like, wow, Barbie dolls. We had toys. We had dishes, pots, and pans. We went to church all day on Sunday. We had, we sang in the choir. We ushered. We had junior missionary. We had Bible study. We had Sunday school. Then in the evening sometimes, and we weren't allowed to watch TV until on the weekends. So sometimes um, Yankee Sister said we had the World Book, then the Britannicas. Yes, they're probably the, all those chapters still upstairs. And our job was at home instead of toys. I was the eldest of six. So it was my job to be on the honor roll. And when I started getting algebra and geometry, my parents didn't go to college. It was my job to learn Latin and Spanish and geography, all the different math. In fact, when I went to Howard University, I had so much math, science, and foreign language that I didn't even have to take any for four years. I had two years of Latin, three of Spanish. I think I had one semester of one semester of Spanish to get the, the four in. G mama said she had a lot of Sunday school, Sunday school. And oh, oh, this is a funny thing. We were, I was talking to someone, maybe it was my sister Joanne in the chat, and we were talking about chores. Doing chores with my mom was like being in the military at a young age. How many of you hung clothes out on a clothesline? And if you did, I know I talked to Yankee sister about that. Did you have a way to hang them up? Like you had to hang the, I see people now with stuff just thrown across. Did you have to hang up the washcloths a certain way and the towels a certain way and fold them a certain way? My sister, Joanne, myself, my daughter, Sonia, each one of us can go in anybody's house and do the laundry and it's all folded the same way. Those of you in the military and anyone else, do, you did the line with clothespins. That's what we did, a triple threat. That's what we did. Do, who knows the rules, the rules for washing dishes? Raise your hand because you didn't just throw everything in the sink and run dishwater. No, there was an, another way to do it. Who knows how the, the rules to washing dishes? Cheryl Faulkner, what was your process? What was the first thing you, well, of course you rinse the dishes and scrape them out. Who, what did you put in the water first to wash? Who knows? I wish, oh yeah, I can. Okay, and a wash pan with bleach. But what were the first things that you washed, the first group of things that you washed. Who knows? Exactly, G Mama. The cups and glasses. <laughs> we didn't have glasses. Daddy said that we intentionally, we intentionally broke them. We drank out of the jelly jars. We drank out of the jelly jars. Yes, Joanne Stevens. After the glasses, 
and cups we did silverware then after the silverware what came hi erica taylor welcome thank you for coming thank you for coming and then the pots and pans did everybody did everybody who knew the rules have to wipe the stove off every time and sweep the floor was that part of your evening chores mind you we didn't even get to the we didn't even get to the homework yet the homework bowls and plates that's right that's right and by the way you guys i have a lot of a lot of pumpkin seeds that pumpkin oh my helper got up every one of those seeds that i spilled last week <laughs> yankee sister said plates bowls pots and pans last exactly exactly and going back to the jquat the t stands for the traditions of all the things that we're just talking about the things that we learned and passed down to our kids and it's funny i have hello erica taylor if i didn't say hello already and gg naturals my great grandchildren sometimes we're doing something for christmas or whatever like we all when we when we have family dinners oh and by the way growing up we always sat down at the dinner table we had this big oak no it was maple a maple dining table with all the chairs around them and we all ate dinner every day as a family we prayed and one of the luxuries we did not have yankee sister and i talked about it we didn't have paper paper napkins we didn't have paper tap napkins we had an extra dishcloth and we pass it around and wipe our hands on it i know that sounds strange and probably even a little gross now but it is what it is and that's what we did hi gina gina welcome and thank you for coming thank you for coming and you know now when oh i was telling you about the traditions so after COVID came around, the, I think it was the last time we had Thanksgiving and we held hands and we prayed and we would say what we were thankful for. So I didn't want to hold my middle great granddaughter's hand. And I, 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 I held her by the wrist. She said, Nana, this is not how we do this. We hold hands. And her mother said, well, if Nana wants to hold your wrist, let her hold her wrist. So I held her hand. I didn't want her to grow up stigmatized that her own great grandmother wouldn't hold her, wouldn't hold her hand when the family was praying. So that is, that is what the G quad was for. And I wanted to spell traditions differently. So I put a Z and S on it, but I guess eventually it'll come up in when you search it hello david corey with crop you're listening hopefully and working and working oh one of the traditions when we used to go to north carolina one of the places that my grandparents lived they were farmers there was a natural spring that came up out of a tree trunk and i'll never forget we used to go over to the spring and there was like a big dipper like I know that it was, I know now because I'm a canner that it held two cups and there was a big dipper uh, there and whoever was thirsty going by in the fields, you just reach in the water, the get the dipper and drink some water. Nobody had all this stuff that's going around now. I don't know how we made it. Hi, Maria Graham. Thank you and welcome, welcome and coming. Oh, speaking of welcome aboard. <laughs> guess what this is i'm actually going to make a new handle for it um so see this was my 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 lead goat lilac that i had i had in north carolina my last homestead turn oh turn on your notifications grandmama grow g mama grow says to keep up with uh g quad traditions so that is the reason you use the big ladle to drink water to triple threat and we're still alive and we're healthy and mostly, mostly sane, right? Cheryl Faulkner drank out of a gourd. 
I actually had a gourd, you know, because of health reasons, I left the homestead in North Carolina and it wasn't possible. Po <laughs> the ever day life of an OCD is chick. Nikki says, Oh Lord, not the big dipper yet. We had that big dipper. I have an ancient one. Now I have a lot of antiques. I have like a few of my favorite things. I have some things that are totally ultra, ultra new, like this wall of bookcases over here. I have a few bookcases over there with arts and crafts things. And this is my, like, if you have your favorite place, your cave, I've got things that I never want to get rid of. I, I like to go antiquing. When I'm in Arizona, we go to estate sales, secondhand stores, just that, that that's just one of our hobbies. And sometimes when I'm there, I might, I'll pick up something and I'm, my sister knows when I like something, I'm touching it gently. And my sister will look at me with one eyebrow up like mommy and sissy, what are you going to do with that? I find something for everything. I hate to throw things away. Waste not, want not. Maria Graham says, we drink out of a large dipper. We drink well water. Exactly. Grandma had a well, but they, they also, there was water like somewhere out in the fields coming out of this old tree stump, this old, old tree stump. So it's 419. I will start talking about what we were going to do today. We talked about the monetization, but I think that since I'm close to monetization, I will use it. One of my favorite one of my favorite go-to charities is Quilts of Valor. I make a lot of quilts and I give them to organizations. This year I didn't make as many as many quilts because I was recovering from my hip and knee uh, replacements. And so I for my birthday, I do, just donated cash, but I will be making more quilts. And what I love about the Quilts of Valor is that when the ceremony and they give them to the veterans and i know a lot of you are veterans in here yankee sister homestead g mama grows uh triple that firearms and defense uh thank you all for your service thank you all for your service i feel like i was in the service because <laughs> i was a police officer my first job out of my first real job out of howard university in Washington, D.C., after the riots, women still wore white hats. Can you imagine going down the alley after a shooting and you're walking, going down there with these guys with your little white hat on and maybe a skirt and maybe a skirt? Hello, Lashes Journey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yankee Sister said the spring we drank from was an old water spot. We had horses and buggies. She was not living then. <laughs> well, we didn't have horses. My grandpa had mules and the mules did the plowing and they used to hook them up to the, to the tobacco sleds when they were getting them from, from out of the fields. So we were talking about the, the, the things that GQUAT stands for. Speaking of the bookcases, Lash's Journey asked me about some of them. And you're welcome, Yankee sister. You're welcome. Some of the books behind me. And I took a couple of the books out that are old that I like. But there are a couple of new things that I want to tell you about. Some of you in here I know are crafters, uh, artists. There is a... Um, a business in North Carolina, it's called Spoon Flower. When I was on the board of directors of the Carolina Long Arm Association, we used to have some of our meetings there. And what Spoon Flower does, you can design your own fabric, your own wallpaper, your own gift wrap, um, whatever you want. This is like a sample that you can get. You can write to them and before you order things like it gives you a sample of the what the different fabrics feel like and the colors 
Uh, these are some of the notes I actually took at one of the meetings there. They give you coupons like free fat quarters, and I never redeemed it. Uh, what the what the canvas looks like, what pieces of the wallpaper. Any of you that are in the Carolinas or visiting there, you can call them. This is what some of the gift wrap. You can you can actually have your own gift wrap. And the what the reason I'm bringing this up is those of you with channels, you can have your own channel design, have your logo put on it and and use it for that reasons. Here is more wallpaper, gift wrap. You can design all of your own things. What's really cool is like in the lobby, when you go into the building, they have what looks like a deer head. You know, that's um, hunting country over there. And the deer head is probably some type of um, paper, paper, but it's covered with fabric. It's really cool looking. Hello, Good Eats Homestead. Thank you and welcome for coming. So Lash's Journey, this will first let me talk about another book for those of you who are crafters and like fabric. This is one of the lesser known sources to get fabrics. It's called Connecting Threads. What I like about them is I love boutiques, but they have like combinations of fabric that all match with each other. And they have like essential threads that match, threads that match. And they, like you order fabric from quilt shops and you get good quilt, you get good fabric, but they, they're cut crooked in the front. They're cut crooked in the back. You may lose three to four inches by the time you straighten it out. Like this is one of the pages with connecting threads. And you see, you can get like just rainbows of colors. And what I like about these, like I like African fabrics, bright fabrics, but you need what they call blenders. You need fabrics that will go in with all of those prints. And I, I'll, I will go in and buy the whole ensemble. Like when I could afford it, it would be a yard, a yard of each color or sometimes bolts of it. Like the black Kona, when I had my long arm machine in my studio, I, I used to just buy a lot of fabric by the bolts. But I wanted to share some of these resources for you with channels so that maybe you could design and print reasonably your own products. This is a book that I've had so long the pages are yellow. It's called Fit for Life. And what it talks about is exercise. This book was like almost like a Bible. I don't usually write in my books or turn the pages down. But this one, I, I have pages and pages of things that I, I outline like they talk about the percentage that your body needs of amino acids and everything. They talk about not eating after a certain time to let your body fast. But one of the main things that I saw that I loved, and, and I'll read this to you. It says, even the finest, us gardeners who get the best, um, I, will, I'll, I will answer Yankee Sister about the, the background quilt. Uh, it says, even the finest, most nutritious food available will spoil in your system, which means like if you eat it and it's your gut, you lay down and sleep on it, even the best food will spoil in your system if it is overeaten. Please do not overeat. And this whole page in all caps, you know, all caps, it says you're screaming. In all caps, it says, do not overeat, do not overeat. Do not overeat. So guess what? We all overeat. Except me, when I'm at my sister's house, my sister Joanne, you guys, my sister Joanne has never worn more than a size four to a size six at the most. 
a size four to a size six. Another book, and I'll get to, to you about the quilt, uh, Yankee Sister. Another book is called Aromatherapy. I've been into aromatherapy for maybe 50 years. Hello, Cordless17. Thank you and welcome. Thank you for coming. And it tells you about different herbs, essential oils, how to make your own essential oils, and what they're, what they're good for. I have, and you'll see when I turn around, there's another challenge going on called Jar It Up. I have, because I harvested my things out of my garden over the summer, I have jars of dehydrated lemon powder, all kinds of greens, uh, just, 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 just everything. And it tells you that some herbs are good for the spirit. You know, some are good for the body, for travel, for home. Uh, it talks about aromatherapy, essential oils, developing wisdom. My mom's maternal grandmother, uh, Sissy Cheryl Faulkner was speaking, Joanne Stevens. Uh, my mother's grandmother was a Native American healer in in Pennsylvania. Uh, they go back in Pennsylvania like hundreds, maybe 400 years. My, my mom's great-grandfather owned uh, 400 acres, and on it, it had a, a walk-in coal mine. But that's, that's um, a different story. To not ignore... Yankee sister who's always trying to be of assistance to me, even though she didn't save my, what plant died? Oh, my avocado plant. Yankee sister, are you talking about the purple quilt or the quilt that you see? This one, the second quilt over here with the gold and the orange and the gray. Let me know. But anyway, these are all these are all my quilts. These are all my quilts. I have I have I used to show some of my quilts at at um, Spoonflower. In fact, there's a picture of me on one of the pages in a place with a like a suit on or something, and my my guild information on my chest, and it was taken at at um spoon flower no yankee sister i made this purple one because it's my favorite color and i was making it for an accent quilt for this my new nana apartment i haven't lived in an apartment since how old am i 74 i, ha I haven't lived in an apartment and so this was like a little um a tiny home a tiny house for me so i was just making things that were my my colors so we were going back and talking about nutrition and eating and even the best food in your stomach is no good in, in, um, if you overeat it. Yankee's sister was talking about the shiny material in the back of me. This one with the gold and black. These are batiks. Oh, and you know what? I showed you guys how to make half square triangles. These are very simple and you can make them by hand. You can make them by hand. I just liked these boutiques and the, these gold fabrics and, and the purple. So I made it for myself, but I, I, I haven't quilted it yet. I'll, I'll quilt it. I wasn't able to quilt for a long time, you guys, maybe a little bit here and there, but now, now I'm back. That is if I don't go fall on the floor messing with that arrow garden again so yankee sister homestead says it's nice i know why it's nice because you're trying to angle over here and try to figure out how to get it i will show you how to make one my darling sister so going back to eating eating properly i had a knock on the door just before i was about to start and i put a sign on my apartment door please do not disturb but there was a loud knock. Mr. Hershey started barking. I went to the door and it was one of my neighbors who, when I first moved in the building, uh, 
He doesn't speak a lot of English, and I only know two words in Russian. That's Dobre Utra. But I spoke to him, and he came, and it's funny. He lives in this building. He has an apartment on one floor. His ex-wife lives in this building. She has an apartment on another floor. But when they came from Russia, they, they I don't know, they decided to live separately, but they're friends. So a couple of weeks ago, she knocked on the door and brought me a bag with some eggs in it. They owned a farm up in Bethany, Connecticut, not too too far from here. Yankee sister asked me if I caught that. I'm not slow. <laughs> I'm not slow. She And, and so does grand G Mama Grows, uh, the purple one. They They like purple. They like the same thing I do. I do. So I got this loud knock on the door and I said, who is it? He said, you do not have to be afraid. It's me. It is I. Guess what, you guys? Ta-da. He owns a farm with fresh, uh, with the biggest chickens. Oh my gosh. He feeds his chickens organically, like cases of strawberries, kale, other stuff. He brought me two dozen eggs. You should see these eggs. They're, they're, the, this, this thing is heavy. It's like three dozen eggs. I put a picture on something. Look, look, I don't want to drop it. You know how clumsy. Look how big this egg is. Do you see this? This is a jumbo egg. And he brought two dozen of them. And look at this. I'm only taking them up one at a time because I don't want to drop them. And he brought two dozen of them. But I asked him how much he would, how much he charges. He said, for you, $5. He says, I not. He says, you know, uh, the little eggs at, 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 at the store, they are eight, eight, seven dollars. They're not organic and they're not that big. But you know what? When I hemmed his pants for him, I didn't charge him. I didn't charge him. I just did it because it was in my spirit. It was in my spirit. Hello, Cassandra, South Fulton Garden and everyone. So, excuse me, my allergies are acting up. So I know that not everyone eats eggs or animal products. And I, when I cook vegan for my friends, like my cakes and things. I want to show you a product that I use. Don't ask me what's in it because I don't know if I can read it without my glasses. Actually, I can with my glasses. And it's something called Egg Replacer. I buy it at an organic food store down the street. And like when I make my cakes and desserts and whatnot, it tells you how to mix this up and how to you know what proportions you use and then it has recipes on the back like egg replacer whipped cream egg replacer orange pancakes sponge cakes egg free muffins egg replacer chocolate and coconut slices egg free orange mousse egg replacer quiche egg replacer banana tea bread egg-free custard tart filling. But I know one thing that's often used in egg replacer is chia seeds. I, I picked this up somewhere a couple weeks ago, and these are chia seeds. You can actually buy chia seeds and grind them up yourself. Grind them up yourself. So the other day I went to, uh oh, sorry, Lila. The other day I went to get, a, I went to the post office and I said, well, when I leave the post office, I don't know if you guys saw this video. When I leave the post office, I'll go get a ticket for that billion dollar lottery ticket. And someone in, someone in the post office said, oh, one guy in Maine won the whole billion dollars, a young guy. I'm like, well, is he married or what? <laughs> no. So anyway, I had an extra $3 and I, 
an extra three dollars. Yankee sister, yes, raising your own chicken. There is no taste. It's no taste like it. I, I, I don't cook with these eggs that I get fresh from him. In fact, you you can't even boil them. Fresh eggs, you can't peel them. The, there's not enough air between the membrane and the, the shell. It's very difficult, very difficult to boil one. I, I learned that when I we first got that homestead in North Carolina and my brother-in-law came by one day and gifted me it was either 100 or 200 bitty chickens. I wasn't even home. This guy just came and left them, left them at our place. So, of course, when they got eight years old, they went in the freezer. But I paid some of the neighbors to, to take care of them for me. And we had a small supermarket. It was called the Sugar Shack. And we had a gas station arcade. It was when they first, first had the... Um, Slot machines, we owned our own slot machines, Miss Pac-Man, whatever. I had an ABC license, so I sold beer and wine. That's why I know a lot about beer and wine uh, to this day. So I had this $3, burning a hole in my pocket, my whole $3. So I think I, I own a Jeep, even though I don't drive a lot. My car has an automatic foot sensor. It drives me to wherever it smells some seeds. Ta-da! It took me to the buck and a quarter store, formerly known as the Dollar Tree. And some seeds accidentally fell in my cart. I got sunflower seeds. So and my sister Joanne, when it, when I get to Arizona, this is the time you plan out there. I've got one pack for here, one pack for the Arizona house. I'll go, no, this is this year. I will go this year and spend a month out there. So we have, Sissy, we have sunflower seeds. And she'll tell you, I've been gardening since I was two. She was always a neat, neat sister. I was always the one with some of the hair sticking up or whatever. Lettuce, you can't get enough lettuce. I paid $5, $4.99. For one head of junky iceberg lettuce last week when I went to the meat store. Oh, and guess what? The seeds, the seeds were still four for a dollar. So I got 12 packs of seeds. Ta-da! Carrots. My sister Joyce is there waiting for me. Zinnias, colorful zinnias. We planted pink and the light color ones earlier last year when I was there. Cucumbers. And then my sister doesn't like peppers, but I got some Hungarian yellow wax peppers and dill. I have a lot of dill in my garden, but I don't know who likes who likes dill, whether it's some critter, was the groundhog, the squirrel, or just the neighbors that go in the community garden and take things. Hello, Martika, and welcome. Martika, could you please email me at ellenpanky at gmail.com because I want to find out where in Connecticut you live so we can get together. And I have some things to share with you. Something, hello, Mona sifting some soil and more. Thank you for coming and welcome. So, mom's meals. Okay, goodbye. Before we go, oh my goodness, before we go to over in, the, in um, my studio area, I planted my WIG grow off. Tuesday and I'm just I've been hello Angela's gardening delight and I'm just going crazy with the hydroponics last year I got some of those little gnats or something in the house and I said I am not putting soil in here and the soil you get from the stores seem to come with bugs in them these days so I'm not doing that so in my Amazon cart these accidentally fell these cubes are called rock 
R-O-C-K, wool, and you see the little hole in them? That's what you pop the little seeds in and you drop them in net cups or however you're doing it to start rooting your seeds for your garden. So yes, I accidentally ordered some net cups too. Why? Because they fit into canning jars, the ball canning jars, and I will be growing some things hydrophonically. Hydrophonically. The last thing I want to show you before I go over to the craft area is those of you who are learning to quilt, wanting to learn to quilt, I told you that, <laughs> yes, things fall in my cart. That batting comes, batting is the stuffing that goes between the top layer of a quilt and the bottom. These are already pre-cut because I cut them to go inside some mud cloth that I was making for binder covers. This is unbleached, unbleached cotton batting. I have seen quilts that had cotton. You know how people pick cotton in the fields? Well, now after the machines go and pick the cotton, some of it ripens afterwards. I have seen quilts with the raw cotton in it. My grandmother, my grandma Della in North Carolina, she used to have like cotton that came in rolls and you rolled it out and put in your quilts. I have two, two remaining aunts. My mother was raised as an only child. And so she didn't have um, sisters and brothers growing up, but my dad came from a large farming family. And I talked to his two younger sisters this week, my aunt Shangi and my aunt Tiny and they were telling me about my grandmother quilting and they were saying that she used four kitchen chairs kitchen chairs they didn't have dining rooms in the country down there they had like a big kitchen and with tables and chairs and a wood stove and she said they had these long wooden sticks and they would roll the quilt the three layers on a quilt on two chairs and then the other two chairs, they would roll it up on there, and then four people would get on each side and do the hand quilting and quilt them together. And there would be my grandmother on one side, then two of my aunts, and then two of my aunts were not at home. They married young, and my aunt said that a neighbor would come over. Why am I telling you that? Hello, Erica, my family my fly family, just because it's tradition and finding out how other people lived before us. I'm 74 and they're older than me. And I was wondering how they made that work. Okay, so that's all the stuff I brought over here. We will go over to my studio area and I will show you last week, I showed you how I take a plastic, just a plastic grocery bag and cut it open and make plarn, which is plastic yarn. So I've already cut it up and rolled it up into a ball and I will show you how to crochet it. I will show you how to make a block out of strips like you make a strip quilt. And I'll show you something for people who don't wanna sew how to make something, how to make something. Let me see if I can go up without getting lost. No, I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, Martika said something about Connecticut, but I will, I will look it up in the chat after, after. So does anybody have any, any questions? Barb Brownlee says, her lettuce, thyme, hot peppers, and the arrow garden are coming up. Moringa, blue butterfly pea, and pea pellets are up and repotted. And microgreens are up in square container. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I'll tell you what. Yankee sister, is her stuff is like that. It's all up in her garage. She might Her, her grandkids might be cold. The, her quilts didn't get done. But they will not be hungry. <laughs> My kids will be warm, but uh, we can go to the grocery store. We can go to the grocery store. 
Okay. So let me see. Oh, one last thing. One, this is really the last thing. Last week I had the components to making a clock and I sent them to G Mama Grows and Stacy hands in the dirt accepted my challenge and he is going to make a clock. So I guess he'll be challenging you, you two battle buddies, um, G Mama and Stacy hands in the dirt. But guess what? I didn't mail his yet. You get a head start. I know he probably has more tools than you, hand tools. So yours will get there tomorrow. You have a quick head start ahead of him. No, we're not cheating. We're just giving a sister a hand up. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay. So let's go over to the other area. And I will move slowly and not throw you up. Oh, ta-da! You see my grow table over there near my craft area? Okay. So, those of you who crochet, I want to show you a couple of things. If you weren't here before, this is what's called a spool pin doily. And it's crocheted with a tiny light, tiny little string. And what you do is you put it on your sewing machine. And the people who have those fancy sewing machines, they like to put their thread on it. And it keeps their thread from scratching the paint on the top of those antique machines. I have a couple of them myself. Some of them I inherited and some of them... One of them I bought, the, the antique ones. Uh, that's one of my jackets that I I painted. And my helper, she's so helpful. She was trying to dust it. It's it's um it's a chalk, it's a chalk painting. You don't wipe that one off. So now that we're over here, the the plastic bags. Ta-da! Here is a plarn ball. I've taken the plastic bags, opened them up, and connected them, and now I can crochet them. This little raggedy part, you can just you can just work it in. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So you pretend this is yarn. Just like the rug that I made, I'm making a slip knot to start. I'm putting in, I'm using a size P big crochet hook. You can make, you can buy any size you want. You can make one. I've seen people making them out of um, pieces of wood. When I used to teach an after school arts and class, arts and craft class for the kids that I was teaching to knit and they didn't have money for uh, knitting needles, I took wooden chopsticks and sharpened them and then sanded them down and made crochet hooks. So this is how you crochet with plastic. Oh, and this, I left it loose because of what I'm making. I'm going to make it like a rug, like the thick, thick, thick yarn. But I've seen people in other countries twist this really, really tight. The same, the same, the same product, and you can crochet with it with a smaller hook and make like crochet bags. Make make bags just like you're using the yarn. You can twist this into a tighter string like this, and it's just exactly like almost bulletproof but now so now when you want to crochet with this i'm going to make 10 quick stitches three four 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because I'm going to do this a double crochet just to show you how fast it will go. And then you go, you go in the second stitch from the needle. And this is how you crochet with plastic yarn. You see how fast it goes? Look, you can make baskets out of it. You can do anything with it. And this is how you make um, plastic bags into things. This can be a doormat, but actually I wouldn't do it a double crochet if I were making a doormat. I would make it a single crochet so that it would be or a in front of the um, sink because it's waterproof in front of the oven. If you have a dog, it can go inside the dog house. It can go in front of the dog house as a doormat. All right, so now I am just doing a single crochet. And that makes it thick and durable. You guys, uh, Mona sifting some soil likes to go live in the middle of the night. I leave my TV on running people's playlist and I'll wake up sometimes in the middle of the night, you know, to make that little run down the hall to that little room. And I'll hear voices that I know like Mona. Um, sometimes David Corey will be typing in different people will go live on other channels and they're like, oh, Auntie Ellen's awake. I said, like, yeah, I'm just seeing what you guys are doing. Okay, so you see this? This is just like heavy, 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 heavy yarn. When you're looking at the screen, it's like the opposite. It's like the opposite of what you're what you're doing. Okay, so that's how you that's how you crochet with plastic yarn. I have I, I have actually made beds for homeless people. It takes it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of plastic bags. But I when you have a lot, I have these giant another thing that you you can you can crochet with is old mylar bags that you can't use anymore. This is like some giant, giant bags that I had from a food delivery. And I'm going to show you a magic trick. You do this with cloth. These, these strips I have cut to, these because it's plastic, I cut two inches and I used a rotary cutter and a ruler. But I'm going to crochet these at some point and make a big mat out of it. But what I wanted to show you is how you connect cloth strips or these plastic strips. And this is how, without sewing them. So here's one. These are really big bags. I had so many of them. Yankee sister, you saw these bags when you were here. So... I cut them into strips. So here are two strips. I put one on top of the other. Let me see. I'll just do it like this. I put one on top of the other and I bend it, fold it over a little bit. And I make a tiny, like a little, a little half inch cut. You see this little half inch cut, half inch cut. Then I put one strip on top of the other, 
with the holes matching. I put my finger in it to, to, to show that I put my finger in it to show that they're on top of each other. Then I pull the bottom one through the top. These are long strips, so I'll just pull them. Then you pull and you tighten them up and they're connected and you just keep going and I will roll these up and make a big ball, a big ball. And since we don't throw anything away, oh, just one minute. I thought I had my phone on. I thought I had my phone on silent, but I see I didn't. I called my mom to tell her that I was about to go live and I didn't um, turn it off. So I have these little strips left over from the two inch even strips. So what I'm going to do with these is this next craft project. I went to the buck in the quarter store last year and I bought one of these little little wire hoops one of these little wire hoops and then I took like these tiny tiny little strands tiny strands of fabric and I did it with some of the seniors downstairs. Oh, here's these little scissors I was looking for. And you just tie them. You just tie them in different places along the hoop. And you have something that's pretty. It'll only fade, it'll fade a little bit if you have it outside in the if you have it outside in the sun, it'll fade a little bit. But I had this brilliant idea, this brilliant idea. Sorry, you guys, I can't see the chat right now. When the Jeep went in the buck in the quarter store and I was looking at gardening things the other day. Hello, Fanatic Connecting Guru. Thank you for coming. That's one of my friends, you guys. Please go over to his channel or those of you with new channels and you're trying to build them up. Hello, Miss Native Cherokee. Sorry, I didn't see you before. Uh, the Fanatic Connecting Guru connects small channels and he has you and he runs your playlist. He shares with others to help you grow your channel. I just saw Miss Ellen, I'm making a rag rug you demonstrated from your prior live using an old heavy cotton sheet. Good for you, Bob Bar Brownlee. Good for you. I, I, I spent summers, I, I have made rag rugs that were like six feet by nine feet wide. So you guys, this is the star that I'm going to show you. And this is something that everybody can do with a piece of fabric or what I'm going to do. Those of us who have gardens and like one of the neighbors goes out to feed the squirrels. I wish he wouldn't because the squirrels need to get another zip code as far as I'm concerned or go in a pot of stew, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to tie these shiny strips. Guess why? To keep the crows out of the garden because I'm going to leave them longer than this. But when these blow in the wind and the shiny part, it'll keep the crows out of your garden like a scarecrow. How about that? And some of these are pretty long. Pretty long, so this will be a giant star of shininess. So that's just something to do for those of you who want to craft or don't want to sew or crochet. There's something for everybody here. All right, let me take a look at the chat. And I have one last thing I want to show you.
Okay, and thank you for sharing. And any of you who have a channel, please feel free or G Mama Grows, can you post content creators? Nikki, you can, you're a moderator, you can post channels and post your own channels. And I appreciate you guys for your support. I appreciate you for your support. Maria Graham, I see people tying like the buck and a quarter store pie pans in the um, sun on string to, because when it flashes, the birds think that it's something, something, um, you know, to be aware of. So they fly away. So now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to make, how to make a block to make a strip quilt. And this is especially helpful when you don't have big pieces of fabric. You don't have fabric that's five, 10 inches, whatever. This, why is this here? Because this is an alternate. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you this miniature iron that I have. So I have this little pad here when I don't want to get up and go to my big ironing board. And I'm um, doing little blocks for applique, like for my embroidery machine. Or if you don't have a pad, guess what? You can use a pot holder and a small iron, a miniature iron. You can use a pot holder. So, oh, and I want to tell you guys a funny story. This, this machine is not the biggest fancy machine. It's called a Brother Project Runway. It's a limited edition, but I bought it because it has 100 stitches. And there are a couple of the fancy stitches that I use instead of using my, 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 my big machines. Well, I was at an, a, a, a class where they had the big embroidery machines, the ones that cost $10,000, $15,000. So I was so proud to be juried in and, and accepted in this group, you know, with my, with my machine. So uh, the lady that was next to me got up and I said, oh, I'm going to save her bulb for her and I'm going to turn her machine off. So one of my friends who was in the class with me said, Ellen, did you touch her machine? I said, yeah, I touched. I turned her, her machine off like the old antique ones I do to save the bulb. She said, never do that. Guess what, you guys? If I turn this machine off, I've got a program to all these fancy stitches. Guess what? You know how something happens with your cable and they say, go unplug it and plug it back in. Everything goes back to zero. I had unprogrammed her entire machine with all her stitches that she had ready for the day. Oh my goodness. I felt like a turd. I felt like a turd. So, okay. What? I'm going to show you guys now. A couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to make a half square triangle. I want to get you close. Close, close, close. Closer. How to make a half square triangle. So I'm going to show you how to, and there were many, like eight or ten different layouts. This is a half square triangle. One side is dark fabric. The other is light. I'm going to show you how you take strips of fabric and you put them together to make a strip quilt. The first thing you do is take a pen. I don't have any of my rulers over here, so I'll just use this. This is one of the most important things you will learn because you can use the tiniest strips of fabric to make anything. I'm only putting a line over here so that I can see about where the middle of the block is. And it won't matter that this is a gel pen because you're not even going to see it. So you see... See this line going across there? 
what you're going to do, take any two pieces of scraps of fabric. I saved these just so that I could show you guys. Here's, this is in the middle, so I'm going to need a little bigger piece. And I'm going to put it down a little bit over the line in the middle. Then I'm going to get another small piece that is big enough to go across. Okay, so I'm going to put these two on top of each other. And I'm going to put just a pin in to hold it. And these are the most beautiful quilts ever called strip quilts. So what I'm going to do now, in most quilting, except for rag quilts, the kind of rule of thumb is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to turn my machine on. And actually, I'm going to see if I can get you close, close, close. Yes. How close is that? I'm going to turn my machine on. Those of you who are new sewers or quilters, Always make sure that your bobbin thread, if you just threaded your bobbin, you make sure that you use your, your flywheel on the side and you put your needle down and back up. Make sure that both strands of thread are coming, the, the bobbin thread's coming up through the hole in the middle. And these two pieces of fabric are not the same size. They don't fit. What I'm going to do is just go down and sew a little line. Uh oh, didn't like that, huh? And let me start it again. I don't know what happened, but this, when it happens to you, you just stop, cut the thread. Pull it out like new. And start it again. So one. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. But life happens, doesn't it? I don't know. Well, it doesn't want to sew today. So, guess what? We'll try it again next week. We'll try it again next week. And we'll start from here. Oh, thank you for your Martika. We'll check out your channel. Does anybody have any questions? Anything you'd like to know? By the way, I don't know who else is going live next. Um, Mona goes live. She does crafting at night. What you do is turn it on your TV, whatever you're working on. You sit up there and work with her. Or sometimes she puts a link up and you come... You come up and I'm going to go up if I wake up in the middle of the night this weekend and I will probably be sewing because I promised my aunt a little quilt before she leaves to go to Virginia next week. So I want to thank everybody for coming. If you haven't, please like, comment, subscribe and share. How do you like this little paddle from the buck and a quarter store?
Dequat Traditions. Thank you for coming. Love you guys. And I will next week, hopefully, if G Mama, and I call her G Mama because she had that little bow in her hair. So she's G Mama. She was so fancy. I will put links up. And if you guys want to come up and show us what you're working on, I will be happy to share. So thank you for coming. Peace, love, and blessings. And I will see you next week at 4 p.m. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later.